Have you ever experienced riding a roller coaster? Did you know that a roller coaster does not have an engine? That's because it does not need it. A roller coaster relies on gravity to take it to the end of the track. Gravity is the force that pulls things to the ground. This involves two types of energy, potential energy and kinetic energy. Energy is the ability to do work. Energy and work have the same unit, which is joule. On a roller coaster, energy changes from potential to kinetic energy and back again many times over the course of a ride. Energy comes in many forms. In this video, we will focus on the two types of mechanical energy, potential energy and kinetic energy. Energy changes from potential to kinetic. It can neither be created nor destroyed. Potential energy is the stored energy due to the position of an object. You call it potential energy because it has the energy that is ready to be released. Examples of objects that have potential energy are a slingshot that is pulled back, or a rock on top of a hill. In all of these examples, the objects are in a position that will cause them to move spontaneously if they are released or poked. There are two types of potential energy, such as chemical potential energy and physical potential energy. Chemical potential energy is found in substances that store energy at a sub-microscopic level. Chemical potential energy has the readiness to undergo a chemical change. It has the potential to alter electric charges in molecules. Examples are the food that we eat, the batteries we use for our gadgets, and the gasoline that runs the cars. Physical potential energy is primarily due to the work that was required to elevate objects against Earth's gravitational pull. It is also known as gravitational potential energy. When you lift an object, you work against the pull of gravity. This work gives the object potential energy because of its position or location. It is the energy of position. The total amount of gravitational or physical potential energy is equal to the product of the weight of the object and the height it is at. And since weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity, therefore our formula for potential energy is mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. Potential energy is expressed as follows. PE is equal to MGH, where PE is potential energy, M is mass in kilograms, G is acceleration due to gravity, with a constant of 9.8 meters per second squared, and H is height in meters. Here's an example. To compute for the rock's potential energy, we would get the vertical height of the hill, which is 5 meters, and not the diagonal measure of 10 meters. Potential energy depends only on the initial and final position, which is the difference in height and is independent of path. If we disregard any frictional loss, it takes the same amount of work to lift the object's mass, no matter the path. The unit for potential energy is kilogram meter squared per second squared, which is equivalent to a newton meter or a joule. Now we already know about the force of gravity. It is the force that the Earth exerts on all objects on its surface. It is always directed downward or towards the center of the Earth. Hence, when an object is lifted from the ground, the work done is against the force of gravity. An object gains energy when raised from the ground and loses energy when made to fall. The energy gained or lost by the object is simply called potential energy. For example, when a 1 kg book is lifted 0.5 meters from the table, the force exerted in lifting the book is equal to its weight. What would be the potential energy of the book in reference from the table? Recall that force is equal to weight, which is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. To compute for work, you can use the formula work is equal to force times displacement. 
Work done in lifting an object is equal to the potential energy gained by the object. Thus, work equals mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. Likewise, potential energy is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. Therefore, work is equal to change in potential energy. You can use either of these formula based on the given values in a sample problem. For this problem, the given values are mass and height, but we need to take into consideration the presence of acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So, we have potential energy is equal to 1 kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared times 0 0.5 meters. We get an answer of 4.9 joules. What if you're asked to look for the height? Here's another sample problem. A 1 kilogram book has a potential energy of 10 joules. How high is it above the table? So we have the original formula. Potential energy is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. To look for the height, divide potential energy by mass times acceleration due to gravity. So we now have the given potential energy of 10 joules divided by the mass of the book, which is 1 kilogram, times acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. 1 kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared is equal to 9.8 kilogram meters per second squared. Now remember that a joule is equivalent to kilogram meters squared per second squared. We can now cancel out common units since we are dividing. We cancel out kilograms, the square of the meter above, and the square second. This leaves us with the unit meter remaining, which is also the unit for height. Therefore, the book is 1.02 meters above the table. Now lastly, what if you were asked to look for the mass of the book? Here's another sample problem. A book is placed on a table 1 meter above the ground and has a potential energy of 10 joules. What is the mass of the book? Again, we base it from the original formula. Potential energy is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. To look for the mass, divide potential energy to acceleration due to gravity times height. So we now have the given potential energy of 10 joules divided by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared times the height of 1 meter above the ground. 9.8 meters per second squared times 1 meter is equal to 9.8 meters squared per second squared. Again, since a joule is equivalent to kilogram meters squared per second squared, we can now cancel out similar units since we are dividing. We cancel out both the squared meter and the squared second, which leaves us to the unit kilogram, which is the unit for mass. Therefore, the book weighs 1.02 kilograms. Alright, so to summarize, we learned about energy and its two forms, potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy is also known as stored energy. It is energy ready to be released. Potential energy also has two forms, chemical and physical. Chemical potential energy has the readiness to undergo chemical change, while physical potential energy is also known as gravitational potential energy. That's all for now. To know more about kinetic energy, please watch our next video. See you on our next video and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.